All right, now I'm, this is um, Echinacea angustifolia, um, and I am straining. This is a dried root that I used. So it's the same thing that I just did. I'm using a thicker, stronger weave, though, because I'm using root, and uh, I don't want the particulate matter to be squeezed through. Um, Was it a fresh root or a dried root? It's a dried root, so it's a one to four ratio. What was the second herb? Uh, this one, or the, this is um, echinacea, angustifolia. I can't squeeze anymore, and I know there's, I mean, you're, you're gonna get some out. It's not gonna be ton, but it's the good stuff that's like really, you don't wanna lose that. Yeah, this is alcohol. Mm -hmm. This is a, uh, can you comment on the different uh, species of, of echinacea? I know I have purpurea, I think, in my garden. Yes, that's the easiest one to grow. It's like most forgiving. It's so easy to start from seed, so easy to divide. The, um, I have some that I struggle with. Uh, it's coming back, but it's not like I'm doing it. I probably won't harvest it. I just... I'm doing it, I'm growing it to get to know it because it's not uh, as robust here. Um, it likes to grow Midwest, more in the open plains. But medicinally, are they comparable? Yes. Um, there's, um, in Stephen Buhner's book, he kind of breaks down, he's really great because he'll take, for instance, like the echinacea, he'll go through the different the different species, and then he'll go through like the different skull caps. And um, excuse me, I'm gonna get a sap. <laughs> uh, you can see this last little bit that's coming out, but it's like the good stuff. Okay. So here's another mark. How long did that one sit in the alcohol? Um, this one's been sitting since February 16th. I was thinking of y'all when I made it. Ah, they'll get to see it. It's straining. So do you dehydrate your roots when you take them out of the ground? Or do you just let them dry naturally mm -hmm. before you take them? Um, I generally like to let things, it's tricky. Um, I will let things dry naturally if there's not a threat of them molding. So in the middle of the summer when it's really humid, if I need to heart, you know, you kind of have to gauge it. It will do it evenly um, and quicker, so it won't, you just don't want it to, to get moldy, basically. This was filled up the, with the root. Not so much medicine got extracted, but it is really potent, so. So the root is more potent than the leaves and the flowers on the echinacea. I've read recently things that debate that. So I was always of the belief that seemed obvious to me. That's kind of how I had it explained to me. But I've read things recently that show that the whole plant has um, the same constituents. Um, but it does make me question. Um, I still feel like the root uh, would have different things than the flower. But that's why I will make a tincture with 
the flower and the leaf, um, harvesting that, um, you know, when it's, when it's ready and in bloom. And then I will make a separate tincture in the fall with the root. And then I can blend them if I want. And you have a whole plant tincture with, with the properties and energetics of the above solar, you know, um, and then the, the subterranean, you know, and the root qualities of the plant. Um, then you know you're getting all the benefits of the whole plant. Um, so I'm going to put this into, I think we have, I have enough to put this in here. I have to divide it into two. Oops. So I'm just going ahead and putting it in these two, because we only had four ounces, and these are each two. So I am filling up these two. Um, there, a little bit. Okay, a little bit left over. Is there any cleanup inside of the bulb on the dosing? Um, that's a really good question. So you really, um, so these are rubber. I generally don't like to leave anything in here. I get new ones. You know, I'll let them be in there for a year, maybe two, but I don't generally like to let anything sit in these. Um, I'll let them sit here, and then when I want to administer to somebody who needs it, I'll give them the dosage bottle, but I don't. I don't like to store them in here. You won't. You'll open up my apothecary, and you won't see too many of these um, because I'll use it. I'll fill it up and use it. All of it you know, when I need to, um, because these break down. The rubber breaks down, um, and you can taste it if you've ever had the wonderful opportunity. To, to try something that's been sitting for five years, you learn your lesson, you're like, oof, no good. So that's why I don't really let it sit, but more than a year. All right, let's move along. Home apothecary. So I really think it's important for, I get really inspired uh, teaching people about medicine making and growing your own plants because of home apothecary. Um, I think it's really important for people to have that relationship with their, with their garden and with the, you know, the neighborhood in which they live, whether they're wild crafting medicine. And you're really, you're forging a connection with nature that is so, so essential. Um, and in that, there is so much healing. Um, making your own medicines is, and working with the plants is, is such an ancient, you know, and kind of birthright we have to really work with the earth and, and um, make, make our own. So it gives us a sense of, of independence. If there's something, you know, if there's an ailment at home with your family or your children or friends um, and clients, you have a sense that you can, you know, you have that resiliency. You can open up and you have, you have your, all your medicine there. This is a picture of my apothecary at home. Um, yeah. I've got backup. <laughs> and those are years, years and years of, of you know, connection with a garden, with a place. So it really builds. This is like an ongoing relationship. Medicine making is ongoing. It's, it's, a, it's you know, part of the plant path. It's a life path. It's a life study. And it's really um, something that you learn. And you will make mistakes sometimes. But it's, um, it's so worth it in the end. There's nothing better <laughs> than opening up you know, the, the cupboard to this and uh, having that within your home.
to really um, nourish and sustain and heal your family. Yes. If you're wanting to make a tincture out of the fruit or the berry of a plant, yes. yes. How would you do do it differently, or would you do it very similarly to the what you've already spoke of? You would do it. Um, you would treat it as like a fresh herb, um, and um, generally with like roots and barks. Um, also, is another you know reason why you'd want to use a higher alcohol. There's like that density that you need to break through. But the berries also have a lot of water weight. So depending if you were using them fresh or dried, I think um, would determine the type of alcohol. But um, yeah, I don't know if that answers your question. Yeah? OK. Can you talk on um, using other medicines other than alcohol, like using the glycerin or the apple? Yes. Um, so I, so it's a good question. So I wanted to make a. It's the same as how I was showing with the folkloric method. This is chickweed, and generally, I only consume it fresh. But it's also very good. Um, I have chickweed, and I have stinging nettles. Um, I wanted to say too, you can use other vinegars. Um, they vary in their in their acidity. So the lower the acidity, it's going to be a lower shelf life. And I dried these because I didn't want to dilute the vinegar any more than it needed to. So it would have a longer shelf life. But to tell you the truth, I do, I mean, this is so fantastic, um, adding it to your water just every day or adding it to, you know, your dressings for your greens. Um, I, yeah. Um, I basically do the same thing where I just put it into a clean mason jar um, and cover it and I let it sit for two to four weeks um, in a dark in the same um, and you can shake it every day um, and that really makes sure, make sure that the whole plant is being touched. Sometimes um, the alcohol doesn't, you just want to make sure it's flowing around there and like actively pulling it out in all the surface areas of the plant. Put a little bit more here. And if you use the glycerin, yes. do you add water to it you or, can. or do you use it just? I don't, I just put it on straight. I just do it straight. There's the chickweed. So when you're measuring a fresh herb, do you press it down to get your measure or do you just put it in as it's chopped? Yeah, I mean, with the folkloric method, it's just like you're just putting it in, pressing it down, and then you just make sure that you cover it. Um, so I made some with dandelion roots and leaves recently and I really packed it into the jar and I, you know, it's like you would do with pickles when you're trying to get it all down yeah. or, or I mean, making a kimchi. So would you recommend that or not recommend Well. The, only, the problem with that, if you pack it in, is that it's hard to shake it. Um, and then you're not sure, to, like, if it's, you know. Um, so you can pack it too hard so you're not getting enough alcohol around. Yeah, and so that's, like, so you can shake it. Um, I probably, will, what I'll do when, I'll, when I get home is, um, is add a little bit more vinegar. I didn't bring enough. Put the lid on. Boom. Oh. So now you have your vinegar tinctures here. Uh, and yes. Uh, most of the uh, mason jars you're using are clear. They do have, I've seen now, Walmart actually has amber colored. Now, could you use amber colored mason jars? Um, I, you probably could. I would, ha I would feel more comfortable knowing. Um, I've read on the, some of those mason jars not for food storage, so it would make me skeptical to even put alcohol in that, on, you know, just in case. Um, clear, you kind of know you're good. Um, and so with the rest of this chamomile, I'm going to um, put glycerin. Um, So 
further? How often on the part on on the part of you and your family do you go to your home apothecary? How, how often? Yeah. How many times a week or how many times a month? Something. Um, how many times an hour? <laughs> well, it um, <laughs> it's a very active part of my life. Um, I love making medicines, and I I'm always you know reaching for dried herbs. I make infusions every single day, and so I'm in there grabbing my dried herbs, or I'm in there. Um, you know, putting dried herbs in to restock it, or, um, you know, somebody calls me because they need uh, something, so I will go and, and open it up, and it, it's an active part of my life, so I open the door a dozen times a day, you know, yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, I've read that some um, plants really need to be fresh, for full benefit, is that true, or can dried herbs always be substituted? I think it's Susan weed, a lot of Susan weed stuff that I read. I, I personally like to only use fresh herbs. The reason why, let's say today I was using like the, uh, the echinacea uh, is because I don't have any left, and I wanted to make some for you, and I really, you know, I. You go through this stuff so fast, so it's something that you know I'm always making. But it's for me the the fresh tincture is what has the vitality, and that's um, energetically you're getting the life force of the plant also in in that. Um, so it makes like a stronger. Uh, I believe that your body also needs those things too. You know the energetics of things, the roots. Though, um, I mean, as long as it's, it's like freshly dried, you know, in er like the, the leaf and stem are freshly dried and it hasn't sat there for two or three years. Um, so harvest it, dry it, and then you need, you know, um, I think that you're getting the benefits, but they go bad, you know. I don't, um, in the spring, I'll open it up and I'm like, I didn't use... I didn't use all this, and um, but it's kind of there's more sprouting up in the garden. So what do I do with it? I'll, I'll put it in the compost, or I'll do one big bang out infusion <laughs> uh, to, to use it all up. But um, but generally, I don't let stuff sit, and if I do use it dried, I use it right away. Yes. So it sounds like you're super tuned in to these tinctures and these plants, like. You're very fond of them, right? I'm like, I don't know. It's not, that's not a question. My question is. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's a statement. No. Yes, I agree. <laughs> uh, do, you, do you tinker around with mixing these tinctures with other elements like concentrated trace minerals or anything like that? Or is it just straight? Like, do I add drops, mineral drops? Yeah, or anything. That's, that's my question. That's what I do, but... I generally will trust that the minerals that I want are in the plants that I'm using. So, yes. Um, if there's something that I feel like I'm not getting from the plants... I suppose I will go and maybe uh, find other ways, but I really try to use the living, stay as close to the living thing as possible. I feel like the, that's most accessible to the body. I mean, minerals can stay, like those trace mineral drops, um, you know, they can stay um, I don't know if that answers your question, but yeah, I, I generally feel like, like I really trust what I'm getting. I can feel that. I can feel it. Yeah. I have a question about any, do you, do you um, apply heat to any of these tinctures? Are any of them like in a, like a warm water bath for several days or? Nope. Um, 
In fact, when you store them, if you can store them in a cool place, a uh, cool, dark place is the, you know... Uh, and I'm talking more like in the, in the making process. No. The only time I ever heat it is if I'm making an infusion or a decoction. Yeah, and uh, you decoct generally, um, you know, the, the harder the roots and the barks um, and, and the dried, you know, the funguses, the mushroom. Um, the water is really an excellent solvent to help pull those out, you know, like the, the polysaccharides that are in the mushrooms that alcohol isn't so great at, at doing. So you get to know your plants and the ones that you work with and what you want to pull out with, with different ones. Yeah. The question was asked about berries. What about if you were trying to make a black elderberry syrup? Yum, yum. Um, that's a good question. It's one of my favorite <laughs> uh, uh, things to make. And I usually um, do a what's called a triple extraction because the alcohol will pull something out of the berry and the water will pull another thing out of the berry. And then um, I use a, a honey uh, extraction as well. Does it need to be refrigerated? The elderberry syrup? It's... <laughs> um, if, it's if it lasts that long in your house, <laughs> it's so delicious and it really works so wonderful that... Uh, I have found my own experience. I never can make enough. And the shelf life is? Um, if um, I would say about 12 months, 6 to 12 months. But I, I always say when in doubt, you could put that in the refrigerator and then you don't, you know, definitely a year and a half. But I don't think it would last that long. If it's in honey, though, won't it last quite a while? If but it's diluted because of the water and the alcohol. Yeah. I mean, it definitely has preserving qualities, but um, if, if it was just sitting in, probably if it was a dried herb sitting in the honey, it could, it could preserve it for, for a long period of time. Blue glass jars that I've used for 50 years, canning. The so, old ball ones? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I got tons of them. Yes. And I've used them for all these years. And I have used them for some of the tinctures that I have done. Do you have any comments about that blue glass? I'm assuming, because they're older than I am. Not by much, but they're a little bit older <laughs> than I am. And I, every year I've used them. Yeah. Do you have any comments on that? Well, you're still here, so I think I think we're. <laughs> you're looking pretty good. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, yeah, you passed the first test. Um, I think they're hardy. I think the stuff that we see now, that's colored, I'd be more skeptical about. Usually, it will say food grade on it, but but um, yeah, I think that those blue glass bottles, it's encapsulated within the glass. I don't see that as a problem, but... You could have I mean, that pressure can with them for 50 years, so I figured they must be good. They yeah. fall yeah. apart. Yeah. Yeah.